Yo guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Ark Survival Ascended and I wanted to show you a quick little tips and tricks thing that's part of my series that I'm doing about how to get best mutations and best uh, overall super dinos inside of this game and I want you to avoid this situation. You can see what I'm doing right here, right? And it's gotten to be chaotic insanely fast. There's all kinds of stuff going on. You've accidentally got horses that are still left on breeding. You've got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. So what do we do here? Because there is a proper way to set this up so you don't have to worry about any of the shenanigans. It's super simple and all you need to do is pay a little bit of attention. That's all. So in order to do that, if you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm and consider subbing to the channel. I'm approaching 100,000 subs and that's kind of been my dream all along. So what are we gonna do? All right, so I've got a nice clean little breeding pad set up over here. This is the best way to use the breeding pad and set it up so that way you can make your life a little bit easier. What you're gonna do is you're, whether, whether it doesn't matter what you're breeding, right? It depends on what you're trying to do for that point in time. You are going to take four female creatures and place them as close shoulder to shoulder as you can. Now, the reason that you're going to do that is because you want to increase the distance, um, I guess, decrease the distance that you have to move and increase the um, productivity that you're going to be able to accomplish. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and back up and move forwards until I can get these things. And you only really want to do the female um, thing once here, right? So I've got the two females there and I need one more. So I need a third female. This should be just fine. Come on. Are you going to be stuck, really? Come on. Nope, you're not going to help me out. Cool, didn't want help anyway, so I'm just going to use this one instead. Cool, that's what you did to yourself. So, you're going to have a total of four females facing against the outer wall, whatever it happens to be, and then you're going to use your male um, breeder to come near these. Now, essentially, what you're going to do is you need groups of four, right? So, what you're going to do is you leave all four of these here and you never move them. Once you have your breeder females in place, we don't touch them. We leave them in place and we do nothing with them. They just hang out there forever. You can rename them breeder females. You can do whatever you want. You can also choose to leave them on breed. As long as you're following the strategy, you have nothing to worry about. Now, for each set that you want to do, what you're going to do is you're going to have your male breeder, whatever breeder horse you're trying to use, kind of at the end right here or whatever creature you're trying to use. And then you're going to have another cluster of uh, four more females or however many groups you want. So in order to maximize your percentage of getting an offspring that has a mutation, you need technically 14, right? So a total of 14 are needed. So that means you need a total of four groups. Now I'm going to be just, you know, I don't really care too much about that. So I'm just going to do what I can in order to maximize it and make it look pretty, right? So I'm just going to pretend, you know, I don't care. Let's just pretend these are females for the time being. That sounds messed up, but you know, it is what it is. So just to prove my point, we're going to go ahead and take the exact same strategy. We're going to move four next to each other. And then once we move those four next to each other, we want to make sure that all of them have zero mutations on either maternal or paternal side, because when you have the breeder um, females, you want to make sure that that's what you're doing. So you set it up like that. And then you take your last horse. Again, we're pretending that this is a breeder female, even though it's got a mutation and we're not going to touch it. I'm going to move it right here. Come on, move forwards. There we go. Okay. So we now have two groups of four. Why this is useful is if you have your breeder male at the end, what you can do is you can walk up between the second and third one, like this right here, and then you can turn on mating and all of them will actually get hit for that mating boost. Now you want to make sure you don't make the mistake that I did and kind of move to the side. We're going to go behavior, enable mating. And as long as you've done it right, you can see all four of them mating with this one. The reason it's got to be four is the maximum number of breeders that can be used at the same time as four females to one male and they all will gain statistics at that point in time. So once those four finish, what you would then do is take your horse. I would move him down here to the next set. These aren't all females, so it's not going to work. I would move him just so I'm placed between the second and third one and I would hop off. And then the process, you can see that it hits all of them right there that are turned on. I don't think this one is actually enabled, but it should be enable mating and we should be able to hit that one too so see how all of those are also getting hit you'd wait for that to continue and then you'd go to your third set now you'd have a total of four sets of these akus or horses whatever you want to call them it doesn't matter it can be any creature you have you want them in sets of four and if you go through four sets you are guaranteed to get a mutation now all you have to do is while you're waiting for the cooldown just park the mail at the very end before you let's say it's an eight hour cooldown right 
you just park this guy right over here. And then in eight hours, you go right on back through the entire process again. Now, this is going to enable you to have multiple floors, multiple anything that you need, and it prevents something like this happening, right? Because this is just a congregation of, I have no idea what's happening, and this over here looks much cleaner, it's much easier to use, and you can track the mutations quite a bit easier. Because obviously, as soon as they pop out here, I can grab it, move it to my raising area, and then these four breeder females can be just, you know, taken care of however you want to do that. But it makes it very simple and it increases your chances of getting mutations and it makes everybody happy because it looks nicer and it's actually more successful in the long run so you've got your four you would just move them over here whenever they have the babies to a raising area and then you rinse and repeat so that is how you successfully set up a breeding pen you kind of it doesn't matter how you want to build it you can build it 20 stories tall you can build it 40 stories wide but the point is is you want to have a male breeder that can easily walk back and forth between sets of four enabling you to actually increase your probability of getting those mutations in in sets especially when you have the ability not to have eggs because oviraptors can pick up eggs now so when you have something like this you just want to be able to slide like that and then i didn't pull it forward enough but you see what i'm trying to do so hopefully you understand there we go that's enough so anyways that's all you have to do in order to make a successful breeding pen it doesn't matter how you build it or what you want to do with it but the concept is four to one and that about right that that's the distance you want to have apart right there that is way oh it's because this guy's on breeding oops forgot about that yep and that's why we don't put males with the females in the breeding pen <laughs> um so anyways we want to prevent that from happening so we keep it nice and clean like this and that's your goal so hopefully this video helps you out and you can kind of create and design to your heart's content but four to one in groups like that is the goal and then you move them across to raise them on the back side over here and it makes it nice and simple for everybody hopefully this video helped you out and teach out